Hello there, welcome back to another one of my videos. Um, you might have seen something like this on Kickback Garage. Uh, I've got a set of forks to rebuild and uh, my old fork compressing tool. Um, I just get a bit bored with that now because it's like uh, levering, loads of leverage to try and get it to work. So uh, I've decided to make a new one. So follow me down the rabbit hole. Okay, yeah, what I've managed to get is a nice little uh, U-clamp that you can get from any sort of car stall, that you exhaust clamp type thing. Then I've got a bit of tube, which I've cut off, a bit of piping that I had knocking around, a piece of all thread and a bolt, and I need a piece of plate from somewhere to make the little fork. Wait a bit, I'll be back in a minute. That'll do nicely. Let's have a look. We've got to take this damper off so we can have a look at uh, fitting this with the Series 2. So I want to fit this clamp as low down the fork as possible to give me enough room to put a spanner on the top and still have enough room for it to lift the fork spring up and give me enough clearance. Off. <laughs> that should do the trick. Okay, more welding rods, cheap. Ouch! Damn! Pliers! She's burning me. Looks square enough to me. Uh, right, so far so good. We've got our little uh, clamp put on here. Now we need to take a measurement from the bottom of the spring, which is there, with enough space up here to put our nut on so we can cut off the amount we need. So that's enough for the nut. Okay. 
Okay. Nut. Got on the spring. Another little check on me. Uh huh. Okay. So there. Measure twice, cut once, as they say. So we'll recheck again that that goes under the spring and has enough for the nut to fit on the top. Yep. Okay, so we'll cut our threaded, threaded bar to this length, which is uh, 145 mil. Okay. We'll measure our 145 mil. Mark it up, chop it off. That'll do nicely, my son. Now, we need to cut the plate with a fork in the bottom, which is this bit of plate that I chopped off. Old scabby bit, but we're not worried because we can clean it up a little bit. Metal is metal. Um, yeah, just spending a little time looking through sticky uh, Kit book. Brilliant mate, brilliant. Don't forget, this is well worth buying. I'm just having a quick skip through it now because I'm going to have a Monza 225 to get kit to fit soon and that's going to be really interesting. So watch this space. Monza 225 coming up. Right. Blew this up a bit. Oh, it's going a bit dry this. We'll take a measurement of this, which should be, the, this is a GP one, but we'll take a measurement of that, which is 11 point, we'll have it 11.12, but we'll have it 11.2, so we get clearance on it. We'll put it to 11.2. Okay, 11.2. That is our width that we want to go. So first of all, we'll get the width of this. Okay. We're gonna do this with the grinder and I've got to make sure I don't go into that line. I've got to stay on the outside of the line. So better put my other glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, we've got a bit more to file out because I was quite inside the line so it seems to be okay. So 
have a look how much more we need to take off. Oh, it's very, oh, it's nice and snug, isn't it? Just straighten that up a bit. nicely right that's uh, our little setup as we've got so we'll have a go winding it up before we do it on the real thing uh, to see if there's any problems with it well it seems to be winding up okay Oop, hit me hit me light Yeah, I think that will do the job, but it's a little bit tight in here. So what I might do is a bit, a little, just file it down a little bit more, just to give it a bit more clearance, because it's getting snagged on it. And therefore, if you've got paint on there, it's going to scrape the paint off. So we need at least clearance to, to clear some paint. There you go. Look, it's getting stuck. Okay, so a little bit more filing and we can try it on the real thing. Right, the first thing we're going to do on this side is we're going to take out the lower buffer first. That will give us some play on the uh, fork link to be able to get our tool into position. Just take the retaining bolts out, as you do. These out. Okay, now to get the buffer out, you don't need any fancy tool or anything like that. All you need is a ring spanner. Okay, just hook the ring spanner on like that. And get yourself a little screwdriver to poke up the side. Take some pressure off the buffer and you should be able to just get it out. There's your buffer. So now our fork link's further down. And we've took a lot of tension already off the spring. 
So now we should be able to get our tool in to remove it, to take the tension up. And then we can get the buffer out, if we can get these bolts out, which have been painted over. So they're going to be fun. Okay. We took the nut off. That's fairly free. We're going to just use a copper hammer on the back. So far so good, that's pretty good. Drop our ring spanner in. <laughs> and out it comes. So that's that bit out. Flew somewhere over the other side of the garage. Right, we've got our fork leg loose. We've managed to get the tool in underneath. So now it's just a matter of winding it up so we can get the fork leg out. And that is the wrong spanner. Right. Better get the right spanner, right? Where's that gone then? Must have dropped it or something. Oh, it's there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're a bit fiddly, but it's a lot better than the other tool where you just leave a lever uh, the spring up because this holds your hands free it means your hands free now and that's holding the spring up out of the way which makes life so much easier should have thought about this years ago some clever bugger came up with it didn't they okay Yet. No, it's got to go a bit more. Keep going. You have to wind these up a bit more because they haven't got the separate ball like the GPs have. GPs are much easier to work with. Just take the big fat ball bearing out and you've got loads of clearance. Thank you. Out it comes. That's one leg out. Uh, so that's that nicely leg removed. It seems that these have been rebuilt at some point. They just painted over the bolts because it's fairly good condition. Uh, everything's come apart quite nicely. So and greased up. So we've got to rescue a few of the parts from this. To, uh, to go on to these other links which are going in. These are uh, disc brake links now. So we're going to fit these disc brake links. I think they're from Scootopia. Uh, they look very nice. These will do nicely. Although the links that we're taking out are really nice as well. Good quality. Okay. So we'll go get some grease. Right, we've fitted our bush back in. The bushes are all pretty well new because this looks like it was built recently. It's fairly all new parts that's been in it. It's just swapping over now to the uh, to the links for the disc brake so we can go for a disc brake. So simple enough. We'll just back this off now. And hopefully we can take it apart.
Okay, that's that side in. Uh, now the, we've only got the other side to do. Okay, we've got both forks, fork links in. Now we've got to uh, find out if they're level or not. So what we're going to use buzz wangle, stick it on my bench, turn it on, and zero it. Okay, then we'll just drop this in. As you can see, I've just put a, a spingle in there, small spingle. So we now get our buzz wangle, lift it up, drop it on the spingle, and we can see that it's not level. It's 3.2 degrees out. So the spingle's 3.2 degrees out. To get it back to level, this link has got to come down. So the easiest way to do it is to lift the link up, take the, bush, the rubber buffer out, trim off the rubber buffer a little bit, drop it back in and retest again. And you do that a little bit at a time until you get it level. So that's what we're going to do now. So another use for your buzz wangle. Okay, we've trimmed it off a little bit. Let's put our buzz wangle on again. Zero it. Okay. Whoop, we're still a little bit out. 1.6 degrees now. So I need to go a little bit more. So we're going to have to pull that out a bit more. And uh, trim a bit more off it. Let's him out. Okay, we're just going to sand a bit of this off now. Sand it off with the flat wheel. Okay, let's try it again. Drop it back in. Okay, final test. Zero point three of a degree. It's nothing. I mean, there you go. Just by moving the forks a little bit, it changes that amount. We're absolutely beautiful there. Look at that. We're on 0 0.3, there's 0, 0, just the slightest movement affects it. We're being very, very accurate here. So that's it, I will go as that is now level. Okay, uh, let's put the light a bit better on that. Static pads adjusted and locked off. Now we're just going to pop the window back in. So this is how I do it, it's just a bit of solder wire. Push it to the inside. Put the slim edge up first there, and then it should just pop into place. We hope. Come on, baby. A bit more to grab hold, I think. That's it. Done. It's 
So that's the windows back in. We've just got to put the dampers on and we're pretty well there. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you really enjoyed the build on this uh, and putting it together and the making of our little tool. I'm pretty sure you can buy this uh, directly from people, probably better than mine, but uh, it this cost me about two pounds to make, so easy peasy. Oh, and congratulations to one of my subscribers for winning the t-shirt. There will be a Steel Weasel t-shirt on the way to you very shortly. Okay, that's the end of another video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, we've made good use of the buzzwangle and a few other things. We made a great little tool for the forks. And don't forget to stick his book. Buy it now because I'm on 10%. See you all later. Put the slim edge.